What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Energy Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me as always is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, I just came back from seeing the movie, Brian. Uh, you as well, I, I, yep. I am assuming, right? Yeah, just drove home. Brian, I enjoyed some of it. Um, I'm interested in hearing what you have to say with regards to some of the action sequences the comedic moments which were many uh i honestly did not mind some of the performances brian uh, there were some moments where you actually genuinely cheered and there was a moment where i was like oh word i know you know what i'm talking about yes i can guess yeah <laughs> we'll talk about it <laughs> theaters were packed how was your theaters this time um, so my theater was, I was in an IMAX theater. Um, it was probably actually about half full, but asterisk, the theater complex I was at had done one of the fan fest events with the prior show. Mm -hmm. So they sold that out and like, there were a lot of people around for that. So I kind of was in the show that was, that started just after that was still going on. So I think that's why I was kind of undisturbed, but I had a good crowd. It was a lively crowd. They were into the movie uh people laughed you know there were definitely some i felt like i was a fairly educated crowd because they seemed to get the layers of some of the jokes yeah um which i think you always need like if watching these it's funny i went back and what with because the wife wants to see it and i'm gonna go see it again with her but she had never seen deadpool one and two her interest has been solely based on the trailers for three and so I, we went back and we watched one and two and i kind of forgot some of the jokes where you kind of needed more knowledge yeah like some of the marvel related jokes she was completely like i don't get it like what exactly. you're talking about and i had to kind of pause and explain like there was this movie x-men origins wolverine where they screwed up deadpool and like yeah. i totally forgot like all of that stuff was fourth wall break so this yeah. one it felt like the audience was up on current events so they laughed at the stuff that they should have laughed at and they kind of got one of the cameos we'll get to about a character who never was because the project was in development hell for a decade a lot of people got it like when he showed yeah. up they were like oh they were like and they made <laughs> reference to the fact that the project had failed it had not made been made yeah. people were in on it so that was kind of yeah. cool um but yeah i had a good time i think this was this met to maybe mildly exceeded my expectations i don't think 25 years from now you and i are going to be talking about this like winter soldier yeah. But I think anyone who goes to see this will have a good time. And I think you'll probably walk yes. out of the theater chuckling and feeling like you didn't throw your money away on a bad superhero movie. But I, but this is something that we expected, Brian, from Jump. Exactly. He said this is going to be a show. This is going to be event. entertaining. Yes, it's going to be an event. Yes. It is a circus. Like yes. there's ring yes. over here, ring over there, ring big yes. tent, big top, big tent. That's what it is. Yes. I found myself, though, Brian, drifting into the, okay, what are we doing? And I found myself also with some of the uh, the action sequences. It was sometimes hard to follow in some of the bigger. Get to that. Interesting surprises. We knew that the, the cameos were going to come, Brian. I don't know what comes to mind when it when when it comes to what cameos we thought we would get and we didn't i know there was this big taylor swift joint that you know that got to the point where ryan reynolds had to put out a tweet like two days before to say she was not in the movie <laughs> i mean because basically they they probably got wind that like the swifties are all gonna like riot and go to yeah, this yeah, movie yeah, and, he, yeah, and she's yeah, not yeah. in it and so he's <laughs> like if you go, she's not actually in the movie. Yeah. 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 So, so Brian, talk to me about Deadpool and what, what, how did the movie exceed? What did you like? What didn't you like? Um, yeah, we might have to do like a power ranking of the cameos. And, and by the okay. way, I would say overall, I got to give the studio credit because they, they threw a few cameos into the public domain, Jennifer Garner, Aaron Stanford. But they did a pretty good job of bait and switch. 
Like there was With... a fake rumor. Remember, there was a rumor that there was another guy playing Blade in this because of the because of a beef ah. that hadn't been buried. Yeah, yeah. And in ah, fact, I Ryan Reynolds makes Ryan Reynolds makes a reference to it in the movie. Yeah, was you never like yes, me. yes, right? Which is <laughs> a reference to Blade Trinity and the two of them having difficulty. Yeah. But then there were rumors about all the all the X Men, right? Halle Berry, Patrick Stewart, Ian, Mc, like all you know, all these people were supposed to be like it was rumors they were coming back. And I think they did. Yeah. It was a good decision, and they did a good job to not have them reappear. Although we should probably discuss: is there an ulterior motive to them not appearing in this? Because this didn't necessarily destroy that universe the way we might have expected. It in fact went the other way mm -hmm. and left it very open yeah. and more consistent with the Marvels, which brought a CGI Kelsey Grammer beast and sort of implied that that universe is alive and well. Mm -hmm. uh, but then we got some cameos that they kept under wraps. They did a really good job of keeping a few really big cameos under wraps that nobody knew were coming to where like there was and they didn't. Note to Marvel with your stupid Red Hulk promotion, they didn't put it in the trailer. So when it hit, there was real impact to a few of these characters appearing. Oh, yeah. We had people standing. And it was like... Clapping. And they had a part. It wasn't like, hey, they walked across the screen. Like, they yeah, yeah. had a moment in the movie where you're like, this is actually pretty cool. Yeah. I gotta say, as far as cameos go, I thought this movie did a pretty good job of, like... Yeah. Give, like Certainly better cameos, I thought, than like Multiverse of Madness. I felt these cameos were fun. They were in the know. And every all the actors seemed to be having a good time revisiting. So yeah. I actually thought that was a piece of the movie that exceeded my expectations. So you want to rank them? Yeah, go for it. I think we're going to have the same number one. But... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but let's... Okay. If it weren't my number one, I would say number one would be the Chris Evans ones that they made it look like Brian that it was a Captain America, it was. perhaps of like Civil War. I forget what comic book, um, but they made it seem like it was Captain America, and I was like, oh, so when I heard the voice, I was like, yep. oh snap, and and the colors, and then and Ryan then Reynolds is like, he's like, he's hamming it up, you know, he's, he's gonna <laughs> say it, he's gonna say it. That was actually great. I did like, I laughed yeah, hard yeah, when yeah, he did yeah, the play yeah, of on. Yeah, they yeah, got yeah, me yeah. on that one. Yeah, they got me too. They got me too. That was a good one. That was a good one. That was a right, good one. So, so, that would yeah. be number one for, mo for for some. Okay. For some. But my number one, number obviously. One is, come on, man. But let, let, okay. <laughs> number one is that's when pe your people were clapping, yo. It isn't just that Wesley Snipes walked on screen and still has that presence. It's the couple of things he got to say. Yes. <laughs> Him speaking directly and screwing with Marvel and screwing with Mahershala Ali and saying like, and it's obviously, look, he's not doing it out of mean spirit. Everyone's in on the joke. Kevin Feige yeah. produced this. They allowed him to say it. But for him to yeah. say like, it's only he's the one, only, one, only, uh, the only one who's ever going to be played was pretty freaking awesome. Oh, uh, and my theater like that one. And he even threw in the some mother. I was still yeah. trying to skate uphill. He put that in there. Which yeah. I, I, I was fired up when he said that. I was clinging to every word, Brian, that he had dialogue in. So he, yeah, he's no, he's number he's, one. He's definitely for me. number one. There was, there was, and there was some moments, Brian, that he didn't even say nothing. It was just his look. Of course, you know? he still got it. And the thing is, I don't yeah. know if it was a stunt man or not, but like he had a couple of the kicks and spins, or I'm like, if that's him, he's still pretty. He still pretty can athletic. move. Brian. This is why, Brian, I don't think they. They didn't have something going with Wesley before the Blade, before the Mahershala Ali announcement. I feel like they had something going on when that was announced. Wes was like, you know, he wasn't going to fight, but, he, you know, he, 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 took, he took the high road. Well, the irony is uh, it, may, it didn't watching him do this with the graying, with the silver hair and the beard and watching the action. You know, it made me it made me kind of come back around to look, I don't like all the rumors we've had about Blade's daughter being the, the centerpiece. But if you were hell-bent on making this that movie a handoff movie, why not have Wesley do the handoff? Because Mahershala Ali called and Kevin picked up. <sighs> <laughs> See, for, That's for that why. call, you need a Blade Blade-centric story. If you want to yeah. do the handoff story, if you really want to do, do that, it with, yeah, you do, do it with, with Wesley. Wesley. 
And this this movie, I think, will actually get a lot of people asking that question of like, if if you're in the rumor mill on that movie, why isn't it him doing the handoff? Anyway, so all right, so we have Wesley Snipes one. We have kind of Chris Evans in the one A um, position. I would have to say number three, Brian. Jennifer Gardner, Brian. Okay. She, I like her. She looked, I mean, she, we know in real life she's aged well and she looks great. I mean, she looks like she hasn't really aged a day since she played the part. Yeah. Um, although she has one of the best, one of the best jokes in the movie where they reference Daredevil. And then she says, nah, it wasn't that much of a problem because of yeah. the Affleck and the divorce. Yeah. That, was, that okay. was awesome. So you didn't expect Jennifer Garner. So who would be your number two? Oh, see, I would have Henry Cavill as Wolverine. Oh, because snap. the setup yeah, right. for that is so good with the motorcycle. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You're right. You're right. You're it right. makes you think it's the Logan from X Men yes, Origins yeah, yeah, the whole yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. when he turns, I was like, "Holy!" Because also because of the nod to fandom, which has wanted this, which Ryan yeah. Reynolds makes a comment about how he looks like it. Yeah, yeah. I actually thought that one was one that got because we'd also heard all these rumors about future Wolverine being in this movie, and he's obviously not. It's, and then you get Jackson. this instead, and I was like. <laughs> And he, you know, it's two seconds worth. Yeah. He's not bad. But, He's not no. bad. He does the voice. He attacks. And I'm like, I, you know, maybe there was a time where he could have done this, you know? So I like that one. That was the my, thing, like, uh, next tier one. He's just, he just, I don't know. Henry Cavill it doesn't just, to me, he's not. I'm glad he's not. Yeah. I'm just saying for those 30 seconds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It what could have been? What could have been? What he does, like the way he snarls and the way he attacks, I'm like, that was a really I, well played. I still yeah. just physically, I see him, but just his face doesn't call. Wolver it doesn't. It doesn't say Wolverine to me. I would tend to agree. He's a little too yeah. golden boy. Uh, pretty there you in, go. In the eyes. It, there, there you'd you have go. to there almost have him in the mask the whole time to, to, for that to really work. But anyway. As a cameo, I think yeah, that, that was, was that was yeah, that was I, there. I read nig. Is that the word <laughs> nig? <laughs> All right, so My we're slotting three. Garner down a notch yes. there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Were there any other Wolverines, Brian? Just just the Henry Cavill one, right? Just the Henry Cavill, because well, do you what do you count X twenty three as? I mean, she's not technically. Mm. You know, I see. I didn't have that one as high, even though Logan was a great movie. Uh, I think it's just. Daphne Keene's character is not like in the minds of people isn't quite as yeah. she, I mean, she was great in, in Logan but mm -hmm. um, and she's fine here but but not as not as memorable so I would probably go Cavill then Garner uh, and then I would probably go I, well I, you know who on, I'm gonna say have it. you know who I'm gonna have at the bottom come on <laughs> yo that joint was hilarious man <laughs> so I can't tell was was he demoing the voice he intended to use as Remy LeBeau, or did they tell him, Definitely. go screw this up, go mess this up and make a mockery of it? Because I think he, a joke I think this is, him this talk is, like that. This is his rendition. This is what it would have been. Th that movie would have been an atrocity. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. But it was funny, though. Oh, it was great. In the context of this, as yeah, comic relief, yeah, yeah, it works. Yeah. But if yeah. you're watching him and you're like, I've nah. gotten three Gambit movies where where this Tim Tatum is, looks and sounds like that. There yeah. is no that's Batman and Robin territory. This is Street Fighter Gambit, okay. the comic book accurate Street Fighter version of the movie John Claude Van Damme did in terms of look. Yeah, but nothing in terms of quality and 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 this is just a straight copy of the comic book. And the, it was just, I, I thought that was hilarious. Every time he spoke, we were like, what the hell is he saying? And that's why, Brian was like, you, that's why I wondered if it was like an intentional gag, though. Because yeah, like Reynolds yeah, yeah. was playing on the fact of like, well, what Gambit really means to say is, <laughs> like, to where they did Channing Tatum, did they tell him, hey, just over the top, this Cajun accent. Yeah, maybe yeah, that's yeah. That's not yeah. the one he intended to use. But in any case, he sounded ridiculous. Yeah. And honestly, even though he looked comics accurate, he did kind of look ridiculous, like with the costume. He, yeah, he, he looked cosplay. He looked cosplay. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. But it was yeah. fun, like when he's throwing the cards and he's got the staff all charged up. It was fun to see him in the action sequence and fun with him poking fun at the movie that never was.
Yeah, I would have. I would. It would have been dope for me if they would have had him in the black and red eyes and stuff like that. You know, that different sort of look. So you have Tyler Maine as Sabretooth. You've got Aaron Stanford oh. as Pyro. Uh, you got. I don't really count the like one offs. Like you have a Zazel, Lady Deathstrike. Nah. You had the Russian who wasn't actually mm. Kevin Nash. It was just somebody nah. looking like Kevin Nash. Yeah, those, those to me like almost don't count. And that jug that I would say the number one disappointing cameo was Juggernaut because he don't get defeated like that, yo. That's just not the Juggernaut. To yeah, me. yeah. They you continue don't do that to, to the not, Juggernaut. Well, they continue right. So this is the third Juggernaut in live action, right? Because we had the Vinnie Jones last stand and he he supposedly was offered this right and said no yeah yeah good it wouldn't good do choice it. yeah wouldn't do it then we had the one in deadpool 2 which i like who's, who's much bigger and a little more comics accurate and hey you know like i was watching rewatch the other day i was like you know he has the fight with colossus you don't really see the momentum as much in that one he doesn't really do the charge as much in that one but he is physically more like you imagine him to be but the actor is completely shielded right it's not really relevant to the and part by Reynolds voice in them. Yes. And then, and then you have, um, sort of, a, I believe it was Martin Chokas. Who's like a role actor. Uh, he was in the equalizer. He was in Lord of the Rings, kind of like a supporting character. Uh, I think he was the face for, for this version, but really didn't get to do much. It gets taken out relatively easily. Um, that ain't the juggernaut. Yeah. So, yeah. So there were some good cameos, Brian, and there was some disappointment, disappointing cameos. What did you think of the antagonist, Cassandra Nova? Not awesome. I mean, like, kind of more meant to further, just further plot, but really... Yeah. I mean, the actress, Emma Corrin, I believe, has won an Emmy for her portrayal of Princess Diana in The Crown. Wow. Um, and she's, you know, hamming it up here. But it's the, it's the usual Marvel problem, right? Like, the, the villain's powers are seemingly unlimited, and then all of a sudden, you know, their designs are kind of universal... We don't really spend mm -hmm. that much time with them other than when we need to. And so yeah. therefore it doesn't feel like we're supposed to really care that much. And this movie ultimately is about Ryan Reynolds and Hugh Jackman. So there isn't really room for that in the movie. So I think kind of for, fine, but forgettable. Forget yeah. Very similar to a lot of Marvel villains we've seen uh, previously. So, uh, what did you think of uh I found them entertaining a bit uh the dude that was uh controlling the t v a that was doing his side thing yeah paradox um yeah I thought, yeah Matthew McFadden. I thought he was actually when they revealed him to be one of the villains, I thought he was a little more interesting i I kind of yes. feel like i'd a We'll talk about the act. And more, and more, and more comedy, more comedic in his comedic, in his, but in sinister his... at the same yes, time. He yes, felt yes. More, he felt more of a piece with the Loki series. Yes, which is the I mean, obviously the characters are from that in the TVA, but mm -hmm. um, I, I would have wouldn't have minded had his part being beefed up or like a little more of his backstory because we really didn't get any motivation for what he was doing. Yeah. Right, we just got a little exposition that he was basically betraying the TVA, but you never really understood why. Yeah. Um, or like where that came from. Action, Brian. T talk to me about the action. I liked some things. Yeah. The beginning part, the beginning was dope. The credits in the beginning and how they displayed that. I, I, I yeah. thought that was brilliant. But then the action gets a bit repetitive. And for me, Brian, I think after the first encounter with Wolverine and they fight, after that, it just gets a little, it just doesn't work for me anymore. Would you agree that Wolverine's fighting hasn't evolved as much as you, I mean, obviously this is a joke, so to speak, Brian, but his fighting wasn't all that great, especially after the, 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 the mask, when he put on the mask against all the Deadpools. That was pretty like, uh, this was like, you know what I'm saying? Like Royal Rumble type stuff. It wasn't, it wasn't impressive. So I think the action in the movie suffers from one thing that we previously discussed, which is the fact that when this movie first came out with this style of action, it was pretty new. It was pretty pioneering. And we've just seen so many of these movies. We talked about the failure of Argyle, right? This is that style of action where it's like a, a pop track playing and then lots of where they take, it's almost like the, 
trying to cross the matrix with Tarantino, right? You take the music, you take gotcha. the slow-mos, you take, and you take blood and you make it almost a joke in the context of this violence. And so like you go back 10 years when it was like Kingsman comes along and Deadpool comes along and they, they do this and it's like, wow, this is cool. It's, I haven't seen this before. It's different. But 10 years later, everyone's done it. Like it, it's in so many movies. Um, that being said, you know, Reynolds sells it but he always, but like it sells to excess. I think this movie made it. If I was looking at tactically the layout of the movie, the the biggest mistake they make, in my opinion, yeah. is they have two Deadpool versus Wolverine fights. I think they only needed one, yeah. and I don't know which one I would have taken. Honestly, you have the one on the beach makes more sense in the context of the, the one story. Yes, definitely makes more sense. Whereas the, the one in the forest might have some is... cooler hits. But when they started fighting, the, the second they got ready to fight, I was like, I really hope they don't fight because it's going to take five minutes away from the movie. And I don't need them to fight at this point. Mm -hmm. So that was, in my mind, a, a, a piece of the movie that could have been devoted somewhere else to story. And we spent it kind of repeating and playing the hits again. Yeah. Now, Sean Levy makes a very strange choice, in my opinion, for the final showdown of Wolverine and Deadpool versus all the Deadpools. By the way, I did speaking of, I don't know if she counts as a cameo, but I do have to give it up for the inside joke that Lady Deadpool was Blake Lively. Yeah. I didn't know that that was coming. And that's pretty cool that she mm -hmm. voiced and was a character. What I don't understand is if you watch that sequence, Levy basically turns it into a side scrolling video game. Yeah. He leaves the camera out. So you're kind of watching the two heroes almost like, you know what game I was remembering was like Double Dragon. Remember yes. back in the day where like the two guys are on the screen, yeah, 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 the screen yeah, yeah. just scrolls. Yeah, yeah. And you, that's what if, and they're going up, they're going down, they're going, that's what it felt like. And I was like, this is a movie that has done zoom in, super slow-mos, like pan arounds, the whole movie. I don't, I would love to know why he, for that whole sequence, you don't really see Hugh Jackman's Wolverine execute a close quarters kill in the costume yeah. you're just at a distance watching the two of them against all these other characters it's a very strange choice because he doesn't do it anywhere else and i was like i think it kind of made that moment it was still entertaining to watch but it was a little anticlimactic you've waited 20 some odd years to see hugh in the mask in the yellow and exactly being totally ferocious and it's like I'm, it's like I'm having to watch it through binoculars it's really weird it's a strange creative choice i would love to know why i did it yeah, man. If I was doing something like Wolverine visually, I would make it look more dark. It wouldn't be as bright. And it would just be more, I don't know, man, more, there, there would be a level be, of realism to it. I was going to say, there's got to be panels in the comics that you could use as inspiration. You know, kind of like how X-Men 97, when... Magneto rips the adamantium out of Wolverine. That that shot is literally lifted from a comic book mm -hmm. panel. There's got to be some in Wolverine's own solo comic books or the T or the X Men comic books where you're like, hey, I'm just gonna put this shot in this fight scene and bring it in close and let you see it. And it's a little bit odd. Um, if in that Hulk versus Wolverine, there is a scene in that the animation where he takes on a bunch of dudes. That's the way I would that that's the way I would do it. Yeah. If if, if anybody has seen okay. that, look at that. That's there's too much. It's, it, it looks too. I'm sorry. It's just too bright and too. You know he what I'm saying? Look, he still doesn't look fierce enough. Nah. Like I said it looks video game. It doesn't look. Yeah. It doesn't look. Video game is a good word. Yeah. Um. And conversely, like you know, with all the time with that second Deadpool versus Wolverine fight, I wouldn't have minded a little bit more with Wesley Snipes. Jennifer Garner, Channing, T like they got some shots in, but I wouldn't have minded giving them two more minutes to do kind of hero shots and cool kills. And I mean, look, well, this is their one chance, one. you know, you know, this is their one chance to do this. Like, especially with Snipes, he got a few in there, but I was like, yeah, give me, give me another couple of those. You know, you had, you know. And did you find it also anticlimactic the way they were sort of saying that they had, they would have their ending 
and they yeah. didn't, didn't really. It wasn't like die. It wasn't a true. Die. Wasn't, I thought that meant they were going to die like heroes. To it, really. Yeah, I thought they were going to be like die like heroes or do something truly spectacular, and you kind of didn't get that. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I mean. I kind of wish like that was a little bit longer uh, in terms of the action. Okay. This this there was two sequences that I was like, oh man, it's hard to follow all these things. It just reminded me of Expendables. The first time when Deadpool and Wolverine, I believe, arrived at Nova's headquarters, there was a fight sequence there. Mm-hmm. Uh, that one was a bit hard to follow at, at some point. And then the 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 that one where 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 the with the Gambit and all those guys uh, are fighting in that sequence. They showed Gambit with the staff, Brian, and you. And I, the first time I spotted it was from that shot from above. From above, yeah. They don't show. And, it. And, and, yeah. yeah, and it would have been dope if they would have had him reveal, like you know, that's his staff, and you know, but they didn't do that. They just so threw I guarantee it out there. that shot exists, and it's not in the final cut. Because you could tell, that's, that's, you could tell that was an edited sequence to keep it close yeah. to two hours. And I'm like, there clearly is a fill in the blank there that we didn't see. I think the shot is there and nobody cared, Brian. Really. That could they, be. Maybe they tested I, it. Yeah. But. I don't know. I don't even think they tested it. I don't think that that was really a thing. I don't think people that were really doing this some, somewhat, Brian, were really paying attention to, 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 to that sort of giving them each of their shine. And, and Blade got one, but I don't really think Gambit got one. Other than his introduction and, you know, no, he got funny. the one. His one was when he used the whole deck of cards. That was his ah. one flourish. That was got very it. true gambit. But yeah, yeah. But there, I'm sure there's a shot of him either drawing the staff or charging it initially and first using it and you don't see it. Um, yeah. As I said, I mean, they could have, what they could have tested though, is they could have said, like, did audiences want to see Hugh and Ryan fight twice or do they want to see more of the final set piece? And maybe the audience has responded more to having Hugh and Ryan fight twice. You know, like that could be the kind of thing the studio would basically break the tie with, you know, audience. And I don't agree with it, but it could be. Interesting. What do you think of Hugh? I mean, he still got it, you know? Oh, he, I think, I think what's He's... fun about him, to his credit, is he does always find a little bit of a wrinkle to give you. Uh, mm-hmm. And I thought there were moments where he would, where, where he reached a level of anger and despair and frustration in this movie that I think he didn't even get to in Logan. Um, Logan was a little more like down on his luck. This guy's mm-hmm. not, not just down on his luck. He's like past that point. And I think when he really starts like growling at Deadpool, like that's a, it's a good scene. Like it's a dramatic yeah, yeah, yeah. scene. I find. Yeah. He, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He, he still has that in him. Um, and, and physically too. Oh yeah, yeah. He still he can still he can still you know get get in shape and do all that. And he just needs six uh, months. Yeah, that's so. that's what they need these days. Six months. <laughs> I did like though. I gotta say. I mean, this is where I gotta give you know Ryan Reynolds is one of the writers on this, and I'm sure he has something to do with this. But when they first meet the, the first Logan variant, and he's comics accurate size, that was pretty oh. funny. That was pretty funny. <laughs> Yeah, that was that was I put three. that was yeah. Larry. So, what did you think of the comedy, Brian? I mean, I think it's basically if you like the Deadpool shtick, you will find it here in spades with some bigger name actors doing it. I mean, it's it's very much of a piece to me with Deadpool one and two in terms of how what they joke about and like. You know, they add in more obviously about Disney and and about Marvel. And sadly, to your point. They spoiled a lot of that in the trailers. You know, a lot of those jokes, I think, would have carried more weight if they had held them. Definitely. The definitely. Disney That's ones in particular. They held some good ones. They held some good ones. But the Disney ones, they put out there. Yeah. Uh, I think the only one they held back that I thought was legitimately funny was the whole multiverse discussion. Uh. Where he was like, coming in at a low point. <laughs> it's not working. That, that part, I was like, all right, they held that back. That's pretty yeah, good. Yeah, but, yeah, 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 yeah. So, <laughs> but... Did you get a? Were there moments where they were playing on this? They were going on for too long. Yeah, but that's the been the case in the other movies too. Like think about a Deadpool two when when he Deadpool dies. one to me is classic. Deadpool one is classic. 
I agree, but when Deadpool two, when he dies, he dies for like twelve minutes, where he's like pretending yeah. to be dead, and then he wait. Yeah, like, yeah. This is a shtick that he. That's my point. Is he's done this shtick with this character. So if you you either like that or you don't, and this movie very from the very beginning with the in sync song and him his dance routine, like he could have done the dance once. He does it like mm. five times. Like that's just how he plays the character and how he's made this franchise work. So you either like that or you don't. But I found myself at times, you know, wanting to hurry up and get it going. Uh, I mean, this movie is just... only two hours and eight minutes. And I think to their credit, that's it... not bad by today's standards. They couldn't, they could not have made this two and a half. No, no. But does it work again, Brian? Oh, can you, we like... see more of this? I don't think so. Well, like too soon. Yeah, I mean, the Deadpool 1 and 2 were only two years apart. And the gross was pretty similar. 2 was a little bit higher than 1. Um, this will obviously, like we said, be higher. Although I'm still curious to see about that second weekend. We're going to find out. We'll get, get to our ratings and all sort of stuff. But I, I do feel like this fell into that range of what we expected, which was like a very eventized film that, I don't know. Are people going to see this three times, four times? Do you need to see it three times, four times? I don't think so. Definitely laughed at some of the jokes. But I can't watch this movie again and be like, like, I can't watch this like I was, would watch 40 Year Old Virgin or Bridesmaid. Oh, yeah. Or like Hangover, you know what I'm or Wedding Crashers. Old yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No, I can't that, watch that, it like that no, again. That's like classic. Comedy. You're not going to, yeah, it's not. That's and this saying. movie is full of cameos, surprises, and stuff. Now, once those surprises are spoiled, what's the point again? You know what I'm saying? Yes, I would agree. I would agree. It, it is. I I do feel like in terms of the, to your point, the rewatchability and the staying power of the movie, it's closer to Deadpool 2 than it is to Deadpool 1. Mm -hmm. um, I, ju I just, I don't think we're going to put this movie into that elite class 20 years from now and say, remember this movie. I don't think we're going to do that. I'm no. glad we have it. It's fine. It's, it's entertaining. They did not screw it up in that sense, but like, how impactful, you know, if, didn't Kevin say this is an eight in terms of impact of the MCU? I, I, I kind of walked out of the movie kind of saying, in what way? Uh, yeah, how, I mean, I guess in the way of possibly bringing, because he, he talked about it, Brian. He talked about the way to bring other people back. So this is yeah. important. So yes. I believe this is important to him with regards to the impact to the MCU. We got a picture of RDJ. Picture of RDJ was hiding on the shelf behind the Iron Man mask when Happy Hogan was talking to Ryan oh, Reynolds. Word. I didn't see I was, that. I was like, I, I don't think that's an accident. I mean, we got yeah. Chris Evans came back to do Johnny Storm, but like, and we got a little, you know, got the little cameo of Chris Hemsworth. Actually, not really. He didn't shoot anything. That was the scene from Dark World where he's holding Loki and they just CGI yeah. Deadpool in there. But like, but yeah. yeah, there's that one shot of the Iron Man mask on the shelf. And if you look, they've angled it so you can see RDJ only in the photo behind him. Interesting. So, but yeah, if you're asking me, like, they announced Deadpool and Wolverine 2 for two years from now, I think the box office is lower than this one, like almost for sure. The consensus is, Brian, that this movie is entertaining, and that's fine. We, we thought is. this would be. It is entertaining. Yeah, it's fine. It's very popcorn. Yeah. Again, that second weekend, Brian, is going to be yeah. very, very interesting. But it's not as distracting. So the, the opening weekend is right in line. So far, it's been right in line with that 160 to 165 number US and about 330 global, 350 global. So mm -hmm. as I said, that will put you on pace for almost exactly a billion dollars if it has a, a, a good standard hold. So that's why I'm saying that second weekend is going to be key. If they really fall off like 65% in the second weekend, it's not getting to a billion. If they fall off 50%, definitely getting to a billion. So I think you're really going to know that second weekend, how people feel about this. But I would think the cinema, I haven't, it's too early for a cinema score. I'll bet you it's like an A minus. That would be my bet. I think people will generally be happy, but they won't view it it's not Black Panther. It's not Iron Man 1. It's not Winter Soldier. It's not Infinity War. It's just not in that class. It's not Guardians 1. It's not. Thank you. It's not in that class. Thank you. But it's not, People... it's not trash. 
No, like, it was it, not it, trash. Yeah, I just like, I just don't yeah. put him in that category of yeah. uh, this is in in its own category to me. This is the first R-rated movie that Disney has done in the MCU, and I would say, like, listen, if this is the best one they ever make, I'll be a little disappointed. <laughs> I just say I'm serious. I would hope there's a classic yeah, 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 yeah. R-rated movie yeah, yeah. in this universe that they can make, and I don't think this is a lasting classic. I think it's fine. I think it's, yeah, some people. I, think it's I mean, would tell people if you haven't seen it, and you, you know, I would say go ahead and watch it. Watch Deadpool one and watch this. I'm like you'd enjoy it. Do you have to go see it IMAX 3D? No, you don't. Do you have to go see it in the theater? No, you don't. I understand why he's not in the movie. I was not expecting him to be in the movie, but. The TVA was so prevalent. <laughs> I mean, the Loki question's sitting there. Like, yeah. to me, like, given where we left that show and given what he's doing, mm -hmm. this is supposed to be before or after. We don't know. It doesn't say exactly when this is in relation to the events of season two. But that was in the back of my mind of, like, where does that fit into all this? Um, and then I think the other thing that was in the back of my mind was just sort of the the references they were making to kind of the 20th century Fox universe being alive, which was, I think, very surprising, which made mm. me think, is that in part a function of the problems they're having with the Avengers? That they felt like we can't close out Stuart and Barry and Ian McKellen, and Fassbender and McAvoy, because we might need all those guys for Secret Wars to boost the star power of our hero lineup. There was so much scuttle that they were going to end the universe with this. And in fact, they yeah. reopened it. And yeah. now I'm thinking like, is that because they need the stars for Secret Wars and they just can't count on? And remember, we'll get to this in a different show. Kevin basically saying, not everyone's going to get to be in Secret Wars. Certainly. Right? Does Deadpool so like, get to you look at the, Brian, you look does at the Deadpool actors, get to right? be in Secret Wars? 100%. That's why Hugh Jackman says at the end, they'd be lucky to have you. To me, that's 100% a tee-up that he is in Secret Wars. We know Hugh Jackman's in Secret Wars, pretty much. Yeah. And I'm just saying, like, if you're looking at the field and they're like, hmm, you know, like, you know what would help Secret Wars? Eight minutes of Halle Berry. You know what helps Secret Wars? Ten minutes of Michael Fassbender. Like, I, I, that's what they're looking at right now. Because nobody's that excited about Simu Lu and Imam Vellani. And they're just not. Like, they're just not. The only... If... Listen. If Marvel decides to recast Shang-Chi, you already know who I'd like to see. <laughs> they're not going to do that, but... I'm just there was saying. a time where I thought they would because of the China thing, but I think that time has passed. I think it's going to be him, but I just don't think people are that. I, I don't think I, I as mean, excited about that. Nah, man, nah. Like, especially this time. I mean, whatever anybody would want to say, Shang Chi to me, the first one was was and all that. But regardless of the fact, Brian, where does Deadpool and Wolverine? Where does it rank after? I want to say No Way Home because as you keep, oh, it's not that. It's not it's not as good as that. After No Way Home, because people would people are, are putting it in the class of after Endgame. Okay, so they're taking all those off the board. Okay, yeah. So in the but post -endgame No Way Home is to me is 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 up there. It's up there with. It's not Winter Soldier, Brian, but it's no. up there with Infinity yeah, War and Endgame. Yeah, to me, like No Way Home is in the it's in the conversation for top ten Marvel movies, not in the conversation for top five. That's how I would look at it. Um, I think Deadpool. I mean, so we're thirty some odd movies in. I think Deadpool and Wolverine for me is somewhere between like ten and fifteen, without going yeah. through it movie by movie. To me, it's in the upper half. Yes, but it's closer to the halfway line yeah yeah yeah, yeah 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 that's how i look at it and so in the post end game era that's pretty good post end game era yeah yeah yeah, yeah. It might be the third i would say it's probably the third best film because i would say no way home guardians three yes and then this that's how i'd probably put it this one versus wakanda forever you want to give wakanda forever better i think it's i think they're in the 
they're in the similar tier. I'll say it's the, either the third or the fourth best. I'd say it's, yeah, it's No Way Home, Guardians 3 are the top two. Mm -hmm. And then I think the conversation becomes this and Wakanda Forever for the next spot. That's what I would say. No. Because then you got Black Widow, Shang-Chi. Multiverse. Multiverse. Marvel. Why not Shang-Chi, though? I like Shang-Chi. Where is, is it? You probably put it number four then, right? Five. I put it five. It's not okay. as good as Wakanda Forever. Okay. To me. Even with all the flaws of Wakanda Forever with Ironheart, the high points of Wakanda Forever to me are still yeah, better. Yeah, than yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely. The highest point is Shang-Chi. Shang-Chi is, to me, very pleasing, but it's kind of light. Yeah. I have it five. That would be number five. But I think it's better than Black Widow. I think it's better mm -hmm, than, mm -hmm, certainly better than the Marvels. Certainly better oh, than Quantum. Marvels. Certainly better than Quantumania, right? We got some real dreg oh, here, right? Yeah, 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 so yeah. That's yeah, what I mean. Yeah. Like, it's a real fall off. I think he's really like, No Way Home and Guardians are legitimately of a class of the pre-Endgame era. Certainly. This movie and Wakanda Forever, to me, are like the next step down from that. They're good. They're entertaining. They don't yeah. rise to the level of the elite class. Yeah, truly elite class. I would I would tell people if you if you're gonna go see it, you won't be, you won't have wasted your money. You yeah, you would have had a good time. But you don't have to have to have to have to have to get there. Yeah. Like if you're like, hey, I just want to rent this in in a couple of weeks, I'll be like, yeah, okay. Yeah. And don't take your kids, man. This ain't no, a no, kids no, no, movie. It's not. it's not. And I saw kids in there, and he's like, I didn't. There were no kids in my theater. Yeah, no, no. Yeah, I saw no. kids in my theater, and it's like, yo, this is not a kids movie, man. But whatever, it, it was certainly entertaining. You had the laughs, you had your, you know, those moments when you saw Blade on that screen. There was no way that you weren't excited. Yeah. Especially after, and then he said what he said. I was like, oh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Her should have please just go, walk away. man. Walk away. Walk away, yo. People are gonna be <laughs> looking at you crazy now, yo. <laughs> you kidding me, yo? Joke or no joke, people are looking at you crazy. If you were watching a movie with somebody, people are going to look at you like this, yo. They're going to look at you. It's the end of round one in Rocky IV. And like, you know. <laughs> the you can't do no more out there. <laughs> Word. Uh, Marshall, don't go out there, man. I got to stop. I got to stop it. <laughs> oh, man. Somebody needs to do that. Needs to, uh, Rocky Balboa needs to stop you, Apollo, from going out there <laughs> and, and, and just being destroyed because... Uh. It is a tough, it's one of those where I don't think Kevin Feige sees it this way. No. But I think audiences will, it definitely, will, that will not help Mahershala. Hell no. That, the fact that Wesley still has as much presence as he has and got the lines he had in this movie is not a help. Standing O's, yo? It's not a help. <laughs> People got up, man, and clapped. That's the level of excitement you got to bring to this role. I don't know if Mahershala can do it now. He can certainly try, Brian. But it doesn't seem like they're heading in a good direction, no. regardless of whatever comes out, Brian. No. And it's a shame. But um, so out of five, I'm giving it three and a half. I think that's about feels about right to me. I feel like it's like in the category of entertaining, had a good time, pleasantly surprised by the cameos and you know some of the lines, uh, kind of meh on the action overall, but it wasn't terrible. Just sort of in line and a little bit repetitive, and I walk out feeling like this was a worthwhile watch, but not a classic. So to me, that's sort of three and a half. I'm gonna give it a three. Uh, I just found that there was just moments, Brian, that it just went on for too long. And it's like meaningless stuff. I know there were some jokes in there that they were trying to put out there, but it just wasn't working for me. Uh, but I definitely enjoyed uh, a lot of the cameos, some of the fight sequences, uh, some of the performances uh, were very well done. Um, but I almost look at this movie as a standalone. It's, you know, regardless of uh, 
where it is being t where it's taking place I, I i just i i like the fact that i was in just there and not really thinking about the future of, of the mcu brian which is a conversation that you and i should have in terms of uh where this is going or where does kevin want this to go next how does this affect the mcu we already touched we've touched on it a little bit with how they're used this as a way to bring some some characters back how i don't know still but definitely they seem to have a plan whether it works or not brian i don't know brian i i just feel like i'm out man I yeah like you know how that yeah, that's a whole other conversation because i had that reaction when you were texting me some of the stuff because kevin's been on the press circuit and i find myself when he opens his mouth now i kind of roll my eyes i gotta be honest i kind of feel like you you know where's the nero you blow it i kind of feel like that's where we're at and the bar is kind of you gotta you gotta prove it and i don't think you can do it in one movie right i think everyone looks at like this movie and looks at like marvel's back and i'm like it doesn't work that way because you Ryan, have an interconnected have... universe you got to rebuild piece by piece over a multiple project stretch for me to say you're back no, definitely. Multi I mean, I think multiple movies just confirms that they're back. One movie can certainly turn the tide. I think one movie can certainly turn the tide if that movie is great, Brian, if that story is great. We haven't gotten that. But Once it, we do get it, Brian, we may be fooled into thinking that they're back, but it will take that other movie to confirm it. But I think that movie has to be a new movie. Like look at like look at what we just gave you in terms of what's been the best output since Endgame. It's all sequels. No Way Home, a culmination sequel. Deadpool and Wolverine could argue a culmination sequel. Guardians 3, the ending of a trilogy. Mm -hmm. Wakanda Forever, a sequel against very difficult circumstances. There is no Iron Man 1. That's what you need. A new movie, a movie that charts a new course where you walk out of there and say, like, I didn't think Marvel had this in them. We haven't seen that. What's that movie? Because it can't well, be Thor, even though they're, they're, they're well, looking I, to make Thor a dope movie, it seems. But see, to me, Thor is a legacy character. Certainly. I'll, I mean, honestly, the, mov the movie that we're hoping and thinking is going to be that doesn't belong in the MCU. It's Superman. That's what we're talking about. Think about it. Everything we said about Superman. If Superman delivers, that is a new course for the DCU. Charted, locked. Yeah. People get excited. They excited for the next. That's what we're talking about. Now, will it be that? I don't know. But I'm saying that that's what they've set that project up as. I don't even see anything in the Marvel pipeline. Now, actually, there's one, but I don't think it's going to be that. If Fantastic Four okay, was there you epic, go. I would say that would be qualifying for this. But that is the turning of the tide if that movie is successful, Brian. Yeah, I don't think Blade is big enough, right? Like, even if Blade was good, I don't think Blade is big enough anymore in the way that the Snipes Blade was kind of trailblazing. I don't think this one can be that. Fantastic Four could if it was like a five-star movie, but I just don't see it. I don't see where that's happening. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't see it either because what will they show us that we haven't already seen in terms of powers and stuff like that in terms of us being impressed? Because it's like... That'll be, they, yeah, that'll be hard to do. Yeah, because think about it. Like, let's say they do Doc Strange 3 and it's great. Okay, but that doesn't mean Marvel's back. He's already established no. as a character. You Man, know, Tom yeah, Island yeah. Spider-Man 4 is going to happen. That's going to make a lot of money. Does that mean Marvel's back? No, it doesn't. It just but That's what I mean. Problem, They're Brian, with DC. DC has a... They have a beginning. They Marvel already began. They can't... Something new. What's What new can they bring to the table other than Yes, Blade. Why? Because they can build Bit Midnight Suns. Or they're 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 certainly gonna we're gonna probably find out in a few days the mutant saga. Yeah, well that's that's the obvious one, but we're not close enough to it, right? They haven't even formally greenlit that. But that would be that obviously would be the most logical place. Yeah. To shell but this goes to our point. They need to sh to me shell the Avengers entirely, go all in on that. 
and then see if they can kind of remake the the landscape. Yeah, but, but I, I, that's what I just don't possibility. Yeah, yeah, I just don't. I just don't see in the pipeline, other than Fantastic Four, but which I don't believe in, the 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 layout of a story that could that could be that for them right now. Just you got me thinking about this. You know, mm-hmm. you know what the inspiration actually is of like staying in the same sandbox, but like completely redirecting and reinvigorating. Because I just used the analogy of Rocky Four. It's Creed. Marvel needs its Creed. Think about it. That franchise was six films deep. Ryan Coogler comes along in a next gen film, reinvents the Creed lineage, reinvents Sylvester Stallone in a character we all knew and loved already. And that completely changed the trajectory of an IP that I don't think anyone would have thought would have yielded three box office hits in Creed movies. Marvel needs a Creed, stays in the same universe, new characters. New course, and the audience responds. But, yeah, but they tried new characters, right? But I'm saying that it's hard, right? I'm saying it took one of the best direct young it's directors of our generation. <laughs> it's hard without RDJ. Now forget RDJ. It's hard without t- Tony Stark's. It's hard without those characters. In my opinion, it should have ended, and we should have started again. Somehow, some way, or whatever. This is a chapter closed. We're starting new again. Whatever. Who cares? Yeah, in fairness, you know it was saying? eight years between Rocky Balboa and Creed. Like this, you know, Marvel probably will never do that, but they probably should have taken some years off entirely. Or don't kill these dudes off yet. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? See, Let that, them hang but in to there. Me, like the RDJ question, and I think Kevin's hinting at it. That's my parallel for the Sylvester Stallone situation, where it's like, if you want to make that creditable without destroying the legacy of what happened in Endgame, you have to reinvent the character and the character's place in the universe, right? Stallone in Creed is not playing the Rocky you remember from Rocky 1 through 4, but, the, but what he does in Creed is memorable. He should have won the Academy Award mm-hmm. for doing it. So that's what I mean, where it's like they took the same actor, they took the same character, but Coogler managed to actually rewrite it in a way that felt new and yet uh, inspired by the previous one. So if RDJ comes back... No, please, 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 no. I don't really want to see him doing exactly the same shtick that he did for all those years. I'm sorry. I don't want to see that. And Downey's a talented enough actor. I watched Oppenheimer. I've seen some of the stuff he's done in the past. Chaplin, like, he's got range. If he comes back, come back as a different iteration, doing something else, and definitely don't come back as that rumor that we saw the other day. We'll talk about that in another show. God, no, that better not happen. But yeah, we'll talk about that, man, because that's a. <laughs> but come back like... as a reinvented version of Stark, and and that you know at a different age, at a different point in life, and you know maybe that can be I, part man, of the solution. The only way it works for me, and the only way I care, is life model decoy. That's it. <laughs> That's the only way it works. So you want him back as his vintage self, is what you're basically saying. Of course. Because think about this, Brian. This dude, after each event, isolated himself more and more, Brian. Why wouldn't he do that? He said it. Why wouldn't he think of it? And start that whole life model decoy that he used for Endgame. I mean, he wasn't there in Iron Man 3 when he saved those people, people. You know what I'm saying? They made you think he was, and then yeah. they revealed that he wasn't. They could have done, they could do the same thing here. But it seems like that idea is uh, that they're, they're using their MacGuffin, the multiverse, which is a. Uh, I would say a lazy attempt at trying to get us back. I do think they're going to have to get off that. I think the Deadpool joke of leaving that behind should not be a joke. They have to, in my mind, they have to find a way out of this. I don't think the multiverse, I think the multiverse saga is not going to, I think to salvage that is beyond, we're beyond that point. That's why the, it's got to be the mutants. It's got to be something different. Yeah, yeah it's going to be, and it's going to be something different, Ryan, with the mutants and and whatever happens with Fantastic Four. I, I just uh, the end of the ending of that movie, Brian, is going to be very interesting. 
Yeah. Secret Wars is going to be very interesting because I don't know how the movies that will attempt to sort of lead us towards that, I would say, would be Doctor Strange, right? If that if they're still considering making a movie, right? Aren't they yeah. still doing the movie? Well, he's Doctor saying Strange? the next thing he's shooting is Avengers 5, but we obviously still, I mean, I guess the Russos are being signed, but they don't they don't have a finished script yet. I don't know. I mean, they can, you know, they can Spider-Man four. I'm sure we'll have multiversal implications. Um, but I, Oh you know, my God. It's like it, this multiverse thing. is just, it just ruined, out, well, we know? talked about it at the time when they went down this path originally, it's so dangerous because it removes so much of the stakes. You know, you got to really thread the needle and Loki did it, but nothing else really has. I mean, I think this one, this one, it's fine, but I don't think you ever feel even though they tell you the world's at stake, does it ever really feel like the world's at stake in this movie? It more so always just feels like they're having fun, yeah. which I think is kind yeah, of the point. Yo, you know yeah. what I mean? It, it never feels like it has the stakes that the Thanos battle had over two movies, which I, I get it. It's not supposed to be that. But you're being told in this movie that like, you know, Cassandra Nova is going to eradicate every universe except for the void, right? So that's a, a global universal problem, but it never feels like the stakes reach that. What I you know, I'm telling you, man, I need to be in that room telling these guys these ideas, man, to, con to if you want to get people excited, the end of that movie, Brian, the cut scene, the end credit scene should have been, instead of what we got, which is like, whatever, right? But what we should have gotten is a shot, perhaps from afar, or some panning shot towards uh, some of the branches that Loki is holding. We come, we come ac across his face, and he screams, brother. That's it. That's it. <laughs> That's it, right, Brian? <laughs> You're like, oh snap! Yeah, what's I'm happening? In, yeah, I want that. I do want them to pull on that strand. Yeah, and that in this movie well, definitely was. I told you was reminding me of like, oh, he's out there holding these together. He's got to be aware of this. What does he think? Yeah, man. Oh, like, that is that is excitement. That is not this. Have me standing around. For this little joke, that's just me. You guys do what you want to do. <laughs> but I'm saying if I'm going to stick around, make it worth my while so I can come back again. I don't want to keep on. I almost considered leaving, Brian, because I knew this this end credit scene was this, didn't mean anything. Yeah, I knew it didn't mean anything. But I stood around and I considered walking out and reading about it. But this doesn't give me that motivation, that extra motivation for the next film to stick around for these jokes. The MCU has taken the good parts of what the MCU used to be and just completely stripped them out almost. Not intentionally, them trying new stuff, but what they've tried just, and they know because they're making jokes about it, how it hasn't worked. This movie just highlights all their problems and makes a joke out of it. Yep. That's it. Am I? What am I looking forward to after this? Is this is uh, with a Deadpool movie. I, yeah, listen, Ryan Reynolds is fantastic as, as Deadpool, but I mean, well, it's a character you can only enjoy in moderation. He was you, perfect you, in Hulk versus Wolverine. Yeah, but you, I mean, this, I mean, he, you cannot build a universe around a character like that. By definition, that is a burn fast, burn bright type of character. And you can, it works great in small doses. If you, if you saturate the, the universe with Deadpool everywhere, it, it gets old. Quick. But yeah, man, let us know in the comment section below. We've gone for an hour. This feels like the old times, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of uh, the Deadpool and Wolverine movie. The show goes on! Yeah!